What's up everyone and welcome back to the comp channel. Just a quick video here to go over a new feature added to the VR N7600 and the similar handhelds. So VGC and VTEC just keep adding features to the radios and making things better and better. This latest feature we have now is for satellite operations and automatically adjust your radio's frequency to match the satellite's Doppler shift. So join me as we test this new feature out. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Now, if you're unfamiliar with satellites and Doppler shift, we'll quickly go into it. Whenever you hear something loud going past, like a fire truck, for example, the sound of the siren changes, like this example audio here. The frequency of the sound of a moving object changes as it goes past, and this is called Doppler shift. The same thing happens to radio waves as well, where the frequency of the radio wave changes as it goes past. Now, this isn't as noticeable at normal car or truck speeds, but when applied to a satellite traveling through space, like the International Space Station, for example, that's traveling through space at about 17,500 miles per hour. So the frequency shift is much more noticeable in this case, to the point where we'll need to change the frequency on the radio we're communicating with. So now with this new update, we just enter in the satellite we're interested in along with the frequencies for it and the radio automatically adjusts the frequency for Doppler shift. So let's go ahead and test this out with an upcoming pass of the International Space Station. So here's our setup for this test. Now, since I've not set up my SATCOM antennas in a permanent location just yet, I've just set them down this pole that was in the ground before we moved in. That was likely for one of those large satellite TV dishes from back in the day. And I just have the cables going across the yard to a little camping table here where I have the radio set up. Now the antennas themselves are called egg beater antennas for obvious reasons. And generally two antennas are required for this one for two meter and one for 70 centimeter. This is because most satellites are cross-band repeaters, meaning they receive on one band and transmit on another. In the case of the International Space Station, the frequency to transmit on is 145.990, which is in the two meter ham radio band, which is what this bigger egg beater covers. And the frequency to receive transmissions is 437.8, which is in the 70 centimeter band, which is what the smaller egg beater antenna here covers. Now the usual radio that I would do SATCOM with would be my ICOM 9700, which as you can see here has three antenna connectors, one for two meter, 70 centimeter, and 23 centimeter. So it's just a matter of hooking up the two antennas to it. But for the N7600, we only have one antenna connector and to enable this to use two antennas, we would need a device called a diplexer which separates signals based on frequency, allowing us to use two antennas for different bands on the radio with a single antenna connector like the N7600 here. Now I currently don't have a diplexer since I have no need for it with the ICOM 9700, but I will be picking one up for this radio. For now though, we can still test this feature by receiving the signal with voice traffic from the space station as it passes and seeing if the radio automatically adjusts the frequency for Doppler shift. So let's go ahead and test that now. Now as far as knowing when ISS will be in range, this can be done with the HT app that we use to control the radio. While this works fine for an upcoming pass, there's another app I like to use called ISS Detector. And with this app, we can see the upcoming passes as well as future passes up to two weeks in advance. So we can plan for the best passes. Now the best passes are gonna be those with an elevation closest to 90 degrees. 90 degree passes mean it's passing directly overhead and give the longest amount of time that it's in range. And as we can see here on August 12th, we have a pass that's pretty close to 90 at 87 degrees. So that's for planning, but for communicating and radio control, we'll use the HT app for that. The process is simple. From the map view, click on the search icon, which is the magnifying glass. Then search for the satellite we're interested in, which in this case is ISS. Then select ISS from the list and the map will take us to its current location. Then from here, tap on the satellite icon and then we'll see information about it. 
below the info, we have a section for TX and RX frequency. And the app, unfortunately, doesn't have a database with the frequencies of the satellites. So we do have to manually enter in these ourselves. Now, I'll reach out to them and see if this is something that could maybe be added in a future update. But for now, though, let's go ahead and enter in the receive frequency for the space station. Need to break into the video here from the editing station. As I was editing this video, an email came in announcing a new version of the app that now has the frequencies preloaded. So once you click on ISS, for example, we already have the TX and RX frequencies loaded in. Now there's also an edit option, which is handy in the case of the International Space Station because they also have a digipeter and transmit SSTV from time to time. That info is here as well now, and it's just a matter of clicking on apply, depending on what we're doing. So I just wanted to be sure this info was in the video so you're aware of this new feature. As mentioned earlier, they were very interested in adding features that the users want to these radios, and this is another prime example. Now, back to the video. For now, though, let's go ahead and enter in the receive frequency for the space station, which is 437.8. And since we won't be transmitting this time around, we can go and just leave the transmit box blank. And now we can see it's adjusting for Doppler shift automatically. As it approaches, the frequency will be higher, as we can see here, where it shows plus however many kilohertz it currently is. And then as it's going away, the frequency will be lower. And if we have a look at the mic, we can see it's in the frequency scan mode, showing the current frequency and adjusting for Doppler shift as it's going by. But enough for me, let's go ahead and listen into the voice comms. So there you have it. Pretty cool feature to have if you're into doing satellite communication. And I love all the features they keep adding to these radios, which is why radios like the VRN76, UV Pro, and now the VRN7600 have been a favorite of mine and can't wait to see what they do next. If you'd like to pick up one of these radios for yourself, we'll have affiliate links to them in the video description below. That'll do it for this video, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because we'll be doing another SATCOM-related video soon where we'll use these radios to communicate with the APRS Digipeter on the International Space Station. Hope to see you there. Thank you all, and have a good one. <laughs>